Right after high school, I was hurt really bad in a diving accident, suffered total paralysis from the neck down. And I was in the hospital like four and a half months. I had to relearn how to do everything, you know, walk and do everything and a lot of therapy with my hands and everything. So that accident a long time ago has left me with very limited sensation and dexterity in my finger and my hands. So nowadays, the way I paint, I don't move my fingers and my hand that much when I paint. With my fingers, I just pretty much hold things. And if you watch me paint, all my motion is done with my upper arm and shoulder. So I've kind of, since that, I've had to adjust the way I've, I've done things and, ev and evolve into a way of painting where I can still do it, but with a lot of limitations. My name's Ken Bucklew. I paint the natural beauty of Indiana, and I just do it the best I can, and hopefully to be inspiration to others that have gotten hurt bad like I have, that have things uh, they need to overcome. I don't consider myself disabled. I have a lot of limitations and everything. I'm just trying to realize how blessed I've been in spite of that, and, uh, and to not whine or complain about the things I don't have or can't do, but just concentrate on what I can do and do it the best I can. I was always interested in nature, so I'd always set the, the canvas boards aside that came with animal mastercraft sets and, and do something of my own. And I was always inspired by the outdoors because I was always an outdoors kid and everything, interested in every animal, every plant, every tree and all that. I knew by the time I was in second, third grade, I knew every tree in the woods and knew all the flowers, the bugs, the birds and all that. So I was the kid that people came to for answers if they saw a strange animal footprint or something, a leaf, you know, I was the one people brought stuff to. And I just was doing all the stuff that I always had a hunger for knowledge about, you know, nature. I was just always interested in it and drawing it. The subject matter uh, for my artwork is uh, just what I'm exposed to, what I see. It's the, the birds, the animals, the flowers, the insects, the wildlife, the landscape, what's native to Owen County and to southern Indiana and also the places I go also. Mostly what I do is what I'm familiar with, is what I know. I have to be there and feel it, see it, taste it, and smell it, you know, to be inspired by it. I follow the seasons a lot when I paint. The painting I'm working on over here now, it's, it's a day just like today. I did the photography for it about a year ago. I actually laid out the painting about a year ago, but I didn't get started on it like I wanted, so I had, now I'm painting it a year later whenever we're going through that same season again. I just start pinching on it and you're know, blocking it in your larger areas and in your smaller areas and just kind of pinpointing where you're gonna work your turkeys in. I think a lot about eye flow. I'll do on a piece of paper lots of times, I'll just doodle some sketches of how I want the viewer's eye to flow throughout that painting. So once you get my foundation down, then you're like, this one's got a flock of turkeys in it. Once you get them just roughed in, sit back and look at it, think, you know what, compositionally, I think it's gonna work. And then once that dries, then I'm ready to start mixing and matching all my colors. I test them like on my photographs lots of times. I use my photographs as a test strip. And for my paint palettes, uh, I found the best thing in the world is aluminum pie pans. You can bend them however you want. Uh, you can paint on the top of them when it's dry, you can paint on the bottom of them. And some people even like to collect those when I'm done. I've been throwing them away for years, but some people have been liking to collect mobile pie pans. I don't know what they do with them, make mobiles and hang them on their porch or whatever. I was the all-time winner in the Indiana Duck Stamp and Indiana Game Bird Stamp competitions. I used to host a, a national art competition of the Indiana Duck Stamps and Game Bird Stamps, and I got lucky. I've won the Game Bird Stamp 11 times and the Duck Stamp six times. I would work a lot from specimens when I was doing those, and several years ago, uh, my barber over here in Ellisville, a big bird hit his brother's window just up the road, and he called me and says, hey, I got a big bird here that hit the window and it killed itself. I think it's a grouse. Do you want that? I said, oh yeah, put it in a, a baggie and put it in the refrigerator and I'll be over and get it later this afternoon. So I went over and got it later that day and uh, it's about five o'clock in the afternoon and I laid it out there in my bird bath and I was photographing it, all the details of it, you know, side view of the head, front view of the head, the wings, the breast, I'm just, this is back when everything is still 35 millimeters, so I'm shooting a whole roll of film with this dead grouse out there in my bird bath. Um, and my stomach was growling because I hadn't ate all day, so I, had my pocket knife in my pocket, so after I was done photographing it, I just cleaned it and come in and baked it in the oven that night with the baked potatoes. So uh, I got to eat my subject matter, and a couple days later, I got those photographs developed, and they turned out pretty good. And I produced a painting that won the 1996 Indiana Game Bird Stamp Competition. So I got to eat my subject and win first place with him. So you don't get much more mileage out of a bird than that. 
one of my goals through my paintings is just uh, to preserve the natural beauty of Indiana through my traditional paintings that I've done and to just humbly be an example of uh, perseverance and patience in, in doing so uh, to others.